Well, it's a great pleasure to welcome His Excellency Omar Zakhiwal, the Minister of Finance of Afghanistan, to um, give us keynote speech for today's meeting um, on public financial management reform in fragile states. Welcome, Minister. Thank you. Um, a very good morning to you all and good afternoon to my colleagues here in Kabul. Uh, let me at the very outset thank the um, Overseas Development Institution Center for Aid in Public Expenditure for inviting me to be part of this presentation on this important piece of analysis, public financial management reforms in post-conflict states. I definitely wanted to be there in London with you, but unfortunately due to my busy schedule, I um, was not able to do so. But I'm still happy that I got the opportunity to um, present our case uh, via video link. Um, in the context of the topic, I'll talk about Afghanistan's experience with the development of public financial management which is one of our key achievements of the past 10 years. Given that the Ministry of Finance has been at the lead in our dialogue with donors and partners on official development assistance in general, and on the PFM specifically, we have a first-hand experience both with the challenges faced and choices made by Afghanistan. The challenge as well as the top priority in a conflict-affected country like ours is to restore confidence in state institutions. As the state builds this confidence through service delivery, transformation of, ins of its institutions must also take place. Key in the transformation of institutions is the state's ability to generate revenue and plan, control, and report its expenditure. This is the domain of public financial management that will build confidence and allow taxes to be entrusted to the government and donors to use the government for the execution of aid programs, which is a key element in supporting the principles of national leadership and ownership. In order to highlight the achievement of our public financial management reform, let me present to you a couple of comparisons. In the fiscal year 2002, when we all started, Afghanistan's domestic revenue was $131 million, which made 3.3% of our total GDP. And, on budget, and our on budget expenditure was $346 million, which made about 8.6% of our GDP. For the fiscal year 2011, just last year, on the other hand, domestic revenue reached $2 million, which made 11.1% of GDP, 15-fold, that is, in, in a non-budget expenditure, reached nearly $4 billion, which makes about 23.2% of the GDP. Again, that's increased 12-fold. From the outset of the reconstruction, the Afghan, government, the Afghan government made a firm commitment to fiscal discipline and fiscal transparency. This commitment was part and parcel of agreements with international partners to ensure significant long-term external financial support for the country's reconstruction and development process. To deliver on this commitment, the implementation of sound systems for financial planning, control, accounting, and reporting, along with procurement, was necessary. In addition, there were two decisions on the approach to public financial management reform, which were instrumental for the progress. One, the decision to use the national budget as the principal instrument for, for policy implementation. Second, the concentration of all cash management, accounting and reporting under Ministry of Finance. These decisions were by no means foregone conclusions, since the high profile use of the national budget implied that the government had to have the capacity to develop a budget 
in an orderly, transparent fashion, and, and that the government would be our main service delivery mechanism for donors. Since the government did not have, at the outset, the capacity in the civil service to develop all the necessary policies and link these with plans in a budget, extensive substitution of capacity in the form of technical assistance took place. The technical assistance delivered the work plus bill capacity, plus bill Afghan capacity in the discipline of planning and budgeting, both in the Ministry of Finance and in line ministries. Given the low capacity in high-risk environment, the international financial institutions in the government agreed that strengthening the control entities at the center, i.e. Ministry of Finance, would be the first priority. This meant giving the line ministries the authority over budget appropriations, but leaving the custody of all funds in the responsibility for payments, recording, in reporting to the Treasury Department of the Ministry of Finance. This segregation of duties between the authorizing body and the paying entity contributed to control and allow technical assistance for cash management, accounting, and reporting to be concentrated in just one entity. Just as in the case of the Budget Department, capacity substitution was carried out in Treasury to develop the required system for policy power formulation in even treasury performance in the early days. The Afghanistan Financial Management Information System, or AFMIS, was developed, which is critical for offering timely, reliable information of budget execution and the financial position of the government. Moreover, this automated control system removes discretion of staff over the use of funds where there is insufficient appropriation balance or where the vendor is not registered with the tax authorities. Another important decision on the public financial management was to use the existing legal framework initially and to postpone legal reforms till 2005 when the new procurement and public financial management laws were introduced. As part of this reform, a treasury single account for all discretionary funds was introduced. This facilitated both the optimization of cash usage and control of cash throughout government. In particular, it contributed to the timely remission of revenue received to central authorities. These PFM reforms, with the support primarily from the World Bank, puts Afghanistan today above the average of other low-income countries as depicted by the PIFA studies. In budget execution, Afghanistan is found even better than in average of middle-income countries. Moreover, with our commitment to transparency in the budgeting process in public funds, we have taken important strides on the open budget index, on the open budget initiatives index, Afghanistan rose from 7% three years ago to more than 40% today. As per our experience, the success of the public financial management reform rests on the following principles. One, the main focus for reform in post-conflict countries must be on supporting service delivery and restoring confidence in the state. Two, this should guide the government to employ whatever channel is most expeditious to bring services to beneficiaries and establish its authority over customs and other sources of public wealth. Three, Donors should not only get behind building PFM institutions, but also use them. Four, a concentration on budget execution reform should be undertaken before reforming upstream budget operations, because these are more closely related to the good and appropriate use of funds, donor funds in particular. And finally, five, the use of existing systems is always preferable as a first step since these are understood to the authorities and allow for immediate implications in the management of donor funds, in uh, management of donor funds. Of course, there is no question that the main driver of progress in PFM reform is a serious political commitment of the government to undertaking to undertaking of the agreed reforms. 
Honest commitment is not just the word of a Minister of Finance, but the understanding and support of the government behind the Minister. The government's commitment is further facilitated by donors' decision to put funds under control of gov government in exchange for transparency in reforms in PFM. A quid pro quo for government commitment in undertakings on public financial management is that donors must be realistic in their expectations, have competent representatives requesting government commitments, and be open to the risk implied in funding operations in fragile and conflict-affected conditions. Thank you.